Well, there's something about the movement of swimming which I think can sometimes induce a movement and a flow of thought. It doesn't always happen, but it sometimes happens. For example, on Friday, I was thinking about the piece I had written about autism. I wasn't happy with it, and the piece kept revising itself in my mind. Sentences rewrote themselves. New ideas occurred to me. Finally, when I got out, after about half an hour, I had to spend that amount of time writing, because the thoughts had been flowing through my mind. is a rare condition characterized by a striking mental aloneness, an apparent lack of social awareness, such that many autistic people make no eye contact and rarely speak. In more extreme cases, they seem almost impenetrable, appearing to be lost in a world of strange noises, of rockings and sudden, inexplicable outbursts of fury. It is often assumed that autism is a world of the simple. But here in Ontario, at a summer camp for autistic children, I could see a variety of strange rituals and obsessions which hinted at something far deeper and more complex. There was Ashish with a fixation on numbers. And there was Warden and his fascination with electrical outlets. This is where the Canadian outlet actually looks like. I was intrigued by both the narrowness and the complexity of these preoccupations. I wondered what lay behind them. Might they shed some light on the mysteries of the autistic personality? Might they reveal something of how autism shapes character? As I tried to make sense of what I was seeing, I found myself recalling an extraordinary encounter with another autistic person I had had the previous winter. Jessica Park is among the 10% of autistic people whose condition seems to go along with a singular gift or skill. Jessie has been drawing and painting since she was a child. Her subjects are almost always buildings, which hold a special fascination for her. This is the National Arts Club Night Time. If you look to the right above the roof, you can see Andromeda Galaxy. Jessie was in New York for the unveiling of two of her paintings of the National Arts Club. I had been asked by her parents to introduce her. Thank you very much. In a sense, I've uh, known Jessie for almost 30 years since uh, her mother, Clara Park, published this wonderful book, The Siege. Clara wrote to me and she told me then about Jessie's artistic gift, which had flourished. Both David and Clara are themselves very gifted and creative people. David is a physicist, Clara is an essayist, and both of them are powerful imaginers of other worlds. Unless one holds that in mind, one uh, doesn't get an essential clue to the creativity which is now linked with Jesse's autism. Autism and art have made a magical combination with her and one which is infused by the creativity and the sense of other worlds which everyone in her family has. Jesse loves encyclopedias and almanacs. 
She has a huge amount of strange knowledge, including knowledge of the constellations and the night skies, which I think is a delight. I think I've said enough. Thanks very much. How come you decided to paint the top of the building rather than what everybody, what every other painter paints? Because I would like to put skies in. Yeah, it's beautiful. And then... And then I like to... I saw the painting of the menstrual cycle. Jesse, how do you feel when you're outside sketching? Do people come around and are they curious or do you yes. just tune them out? Yes. Like asks me, what are you making, what are you drawing, and what are you doing? And what do you think when they, what do you do and think, do you like that or do you not like that? Didn't like those, what <laughs> are you question. <laughs> and what do you sometimes do? I sometimes snap. Can you, can you make a snap? Just, just like, what do you? <laughs> That's one example. Yeah. Why do you say that? Why do you say that? Oh. Do you, Jesse, like to look at the work of other artists? Sometimes. But when you go to a museum, what do you really like to look at? My own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the security system. <laughs> Yes, I think Jesse, Jesse would always prefer to look at the security system. <laughs> Have you got one? Yeah. I'd like to think so. <laughs> I was astounded. A discussion of Jesse's art had turned into an analysis of burglar alarms. And this proved to be just the beginning. As I was soon to discover, Jesse's life was dominated by fixations like this. There's also yes. Her latest concerned the hidden fees and charges that one finds in bank statements. This takes it right out of our bank account. Yes. And so we don't have to pay any interest on the borrowing. But except for a dollar and a quarter. We bank. pay a dollar and a quarter. Which is take right out of your account. Yeah. And we'll never see it again. Isn't that too bad? It's yeah. just gone. Yeah. But they got the dollar in the corner. They got the bank. The bank got it and they're going to keep it. <laughs> Is that, that a way to earn some money? Yeah. Because the bank isn't just going to do this because they like us. Yeah. The bank is going to do it because they need the dollar and a quarter. Yes. They got to pay the rent, they got to pay the people, they got to clean the floor. And, and pay for the electric bill. Pay for the electric bill because this is all electric. And, and pay for the postage when they mail each person a monthly statement. Pay for the postage. And Jesse, a dollar and a quarter did the whole thing. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Yeah. Is it too good, Jesse? No. Yeah. Do your enthusiasms last forever? No. Some may get worn away. She's still somewhat interested in security systems and burglar alarms, and more than somewhat interested in those. Uh, they will eventually wear away, but they will leave a residual uh, pleasure. <laughs> a, a long time ago, my own enthusiasm about the refrigerator was a three-door refrigerator, but I even found a five-door refrigerator in the Jewish center. <laughs> <laughs> That's tremendous. Yes. Remember, Jesse, a long time ago, it was much harder for you to talk yes. than it is now. We would use the enthusiasms as yes. ways to get her to do this terribly difficult yes. thing. Mm. 
And so that, of course, is a razor's edge. You are encouraging obsessions, and Jesse knows the word obsessions. Yes, he means to say it repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Jesse, you want to tell about Route 7? Your favorite route? Tell about Route 7. Route 7 is my favorite route. Best is South of Great Barrington. And the next best is North of Manchester. And how about right here? Or is it just Jesse's enthusiasms reminded me of the obsessions many of us have as children. But Jesse is 37. Clearly, here was something of a different order. I felt that I had to see more of her, but this time on her own ground north of Williamstown and the fifth is south of Williamstown like I'm on it right now this is Jessie's town she was born here in Williamstown and she's been in this house for 25 years um, Clara wrote a wonderful book about her in 1967 about the first eight years of Jessie's life but the minute examination which was already going on, has continued non-stop for the last quarter of a century. Every drawing, every word, every thought of Jesse's has been documented, scrutinized, recorded. The house has an incredible archive of Jesse's productions. A unique study of the growth and development of a gifted autistic person and their world. She was just getting into being nine, I think, maybe just before that. And she began to do these perfectly spontaneously. She was able to tell me that this is Jessica. Now at this point, Jessie could hardly speak. So this was really her mode of communication, a very mm -hmm. important one. Mm -hmm. And one which, which was... But you know, she's hardly communicating it to me. She, you know, I, I collect yes. them. I ask her about them afterwards. As Clara wrong. went through Jessie's earliest okay. drawings, my eye was drawn to the repetitive crossing out of a strange she word. Why? She tried the gark, grak, which she's crossed out, geek. Now, well, what is a geek? Well, it took a long time to find out. Jessie would draw these cartoons, and this, she had started to be able to write, so underneath some of the cartoons, you would say gake. Yeah, and gave. Or gave, or gunk. Or, or rake. Or rake. And goke. <laughs> and goke. It was particularly mysterious because at eight, she couldn't read, she never wrote, and in fact, I don't think she could make the noise, write the noise that in fact it turned out to be. It turned out to be the noise that a radiator makes. The thermostat was loud, when it turned on and then didn't want to go in the cellar because it is too loud and didn't want to go to my parents' room and didn't want to go to the third floor. Because you might hear that click? Yes. About the radiator saying gake. A, a, a gake or gunk? Yes. That's really almost your oldest obsession because that goes right back to the, the uh, unexpected sound. The unexpected sound, and it goes back to the thermostat when you were just a little girl. Many people with autism have a heightened sense of hearing, and this can be terrifying, particularly when the sounds are unpredictable, like the clicks of heaters and thermostats. Heaters turned out to be the subjects of many of Jessie's early paintings. Perhaps Jessie had found a way of subduing this terror by transforming the source of the sounds into art. Later, while watching Jessie perform one of the routine tasks that seemed to structure her days, I noticed a strange painting of a sun this is the shingle 